In this video, we're going to discuss Kirchhoff's law. Now, Kirchhoff's law gives us the power to be able to calculate the reaction enthalpy, the standard enthalpy of a reaction, uh, at any elevated temperature. So in order to understand Kirchhoff's law, let's look at the figure on the left. Uh, what I'm showing here is the variation of the enthalpy with respect to temperature. At this point, you should have an appreciation for the fact that enthalpy does vary with respect to temperature. This property carries over to uh, reaction enthalpies as well, our standard enthalpies of reaction. So let's say you know the enthalpy for a reaction at a given temperature, but you wanna know the standard enthalpy for that reaction at an elevated temperature. So this figure shows uh, the enthalpy change for the products in this reaction and the reactants as a function of temperature. You'll notice that they are temperature dependent, however slight or dramatic it may be. Uh, they have some sort of temperature dependence to their enthalpy as the, as the temperature rises. Now, uh, if you know the temperature at one, uh, if you know the enthalpy at one temperature, right, it's possible to calculate the, temp the enthalpy at an elevated temperature using Kirchhoff's law. So let's say that you're interested in this uh, enthalpy at T2 here, right? So you have delta H T2, right? You're interested in calculating that guy. And you already know the enthalpy change at T1, right? So let's say we have delta H at T1, right? Kirchhoff's law says that if you integrate over the heat capacity within the temperature range T2 to T1, that will give you the enthalpy at the elevated temperature, right? So if you add the integral from T1 to T2, and I'm gonna put delta Cp, and I'll explain what that means in a second. But if you integrate over the heat capacity within that region, then you get the, uh, the enthalpy change at the elevated temperature. And I wanna put the little circles in the superscripts, right? These are going to be standard enthalpies, right? So that means they're at constant pressure, right? So you might be wondering what's the link between the heat capacity here and the enthalpy for the reaction? Well, we're looking at the enthalpy change as the temperature is varying, right? So the slope of both of these plots would then be um, would be dH over dt, right? It would just be dH dt. And since we're looking at standard enthalpies, it's gonna be a standard pressure of one bar. So it's that constant pressure. And hopefully at this point, that derivative looks very familiar to you. That's the heat capacity at constant pressure, right? So basically, what Kirchhoff's law is telling you is that, okay, if you want to get the enthalpy for a reaction at an elevated temperature, all you have to do is integrate over the slope, right? Accounting for this temperature variation in that region, right? So uh, this equation is Kirchhoff's law. So this is Kirchhoff's law equation. Right, now let's talk a little bit about this delta Cp. So you're dealing with a reaction, right? When we've, when we've been talking about heat capacity up to this point, we've only really given a definition for heat capacity of a single substance, right? So you might have the heat capacity of water or the heat capacity of CO2. But what happens when you need the heat capacity for a reaction that involves multiple different species? Well, we can use an equation that's very similar to Hess's law in order to get this delta Cp for a reaction. So delta Cp would be equal to the sum of the products, right? And I'm gonna use V uh, as the stoichiometric coefficient. So you have the stoichiometric coefficient times the heat capacity for the products minus the sum of the reactants. Right, the stoichiometric coefficient for those guys and the heat capacity of each reactant. Right, so in a very similar way that you would calculate the reaction enthalpy using Hess's law, uh, you can calculate the heat capacity 
for the reaction using a similar Hess's law type equation. Right, so if you want to get the reaction enthalpy at an elevated temperature and you know it's enthalpy at a lower temperature, you can use this integral, basically adding on that integral contribution over the slope of the plot uh, in order to get the enthalpy at an elevated temperature. So let's do an example problem. So this example says the standard enthalpy of formation of gaseous H2O at 298 Kelvin is negative 241.82 kilojoules per mole. Estimate this value at 100 degrees C given the following values for the molar heat capacities at constant pressure. And it gives you each molar heat capacity in uh, kilojoules per Kelvin per mole, right? So these are molar heat capacities in kilojoules per Kelvin. And the last line is extremely important. So this last line tells you assume the heat capacities are independent of temperature. Right, we'll look at what that is going to mean uh, mathematically in a second. So let's start with this problem. So we're looking at the enthalpy of formation for H2O. Right? So we want to uh, write out a reaction for the enthalpy of formation or the formation reaction for H2O. Right? So we have H2 gas plus one half O2 gas. would yield one mole of H2O, right? So this is the reaction that we're actually trying to uh, solve the enthalpy change for, right? So this gives us one mole of H2O gas. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is to go ahead and uh, convert this temperature to Kelvin, right? So uh, 100 degrees Celsius would be 373 uh, Kelvin. Right, so we have our temperature, we have our reaction here. So the first thing that we want to do is calculate the heat capacity. Right, so that's going to be our first step. Calculate delta Cp. Right, so to calculate delta Cp, we have all of our molar heat capacities there. Right, so we have everything we need to calculate it. Right, so we just need to do the sum of the products uh, minus the sum of the reactants. And in this case, our only product here is H2O. So we're going to use the 33.58 that we have there. So we got 33.58 kilojoules per Kelvin per mole minus the sum of the reactants, right? So our reactants are H2 and O2. So for H2, we had 28. 0.84 kilojoules per Kelvin per mole plus now we have to account for the stoichiometric coefficient in front of O2 so we'll have one half the heat capacity of O2 which is 29.37 so we got 29.37 uh, kilojoules per Kelvin per mole all right, so once you add all of this up, you get the heat capacity for the reaction. So that's going to give you negative 9.95 kilojoules per Kelvin per mole for the entire reaction, right? So that's our uh, heat capacity for the formation of H2O, right? So now that we have that delta Cp, we can plug this stuff back into Kirchhoff's law in order to solve for the enthalpy at 373. So now we can use Kirchhoff's law. Right, to calculate the enthalpy. So we're, we want the enthalpy change for this reaction, the standard enthalpy change at 373 Kelvin, right? We currently have the enthalpy change at 298 Kelvin, right? So if you look back up at the top of the problem, right, it's giving us the temperature of the standard enthalpy that's taken at 298 Kelvin. So we have that enthalpy, right? Now we just have to add in our integral, right? So we're going to be integrating from 298 to 373 right, of delta Cp dt.
Okay, so now this hint here becomes very important, right? We've calculated our heat capacity as a constant, a number, right? It tells us to assume that these heat capacities are going to be independent of the temperature. So what that means for us here is that we can pull CP out of this integral, right? Now, this will not be the case all of the time. You might not be given numbers for these heat capacities. You might be given functions. And then in that case, you would still add up uh, the functions, add like terms or whatnot of those polynomials to be able to get a function for delta CP. And if it's not independent of temperature, you can't pull this guy out. But in this case, it's independent of temperature, so we can pull it out. So we're left with delta H. In fact, let me go ahead and plug in numbers now. So our uh, uh, enthalpy of formation at 298K is negative. 241.82 kilojoules per mole plus we got our negative 9.95 kilojoules per kelvin per mole for our heat capacity and the difference between our temperatures right so if this is if this guy is T2 right so this is our T2 our T1, 298 Kelvin. The difference between those two is going to be 75 Kelvin. So we end up with 75 Kelvin. Right, because if we take CP out of the integral, then we're just integrating over DT. That's just going to be the difference in temperature. So this temperature difference is just 75 Kelvin. Okay, you plug the numbers, then you get a final answer of negative 242.6 kilojoules per mole. And a quick note about units, right? So these, this Kelvin here cancels out with the Kelvin in our heat capacity. So that's why we're just left with kilojoules per mole. So that gives us the enthalpy change at the elevated temperature right the standard enthalpy change so we're still at one bar at 373 Kelvin right so especially when you when you can assume that your heat capacities are independent of temperature using uh, Kirchhoff's law is going to be fairly simple um, making sure you have the right chemical equation is going to be very crucial though so um, you know it won't always be given to you you might have um, a combustion reaction you might need to know uh, what the reactants and products would be in those cases they might give you uh, formation decomposition what have you making sure you start from a correct uh, balanced chemical equation always important um, and then just making sure you solve this integral correctly. If you're not given that the heat capacities are independent of temperature, you might have to solve an integral for your heat capacity. But we've went through that earlier. Um, it's usually fairly straightforward integration of a polynomial. So um, usually this is fairly straightforward as well. But this is very powerful to be able to calculate enthalpies at an elevated temperature especially if you're already given that data at standard temperature, which you're usually given in some type of table um, or is easily accessible online, and you want to know the enthalpy change at, a, at an elevated temperature, Kirchhoff's Law gives you a way to calculate that immediately.